At the end of this video, your app should look something like this. Every user will have its own messages. And when typing the message, it will stay with that user. And since we are using C++ now, it will stay to the end of the session. So before we begin, I would like to add a flag on the main.qml. So basically what I want is when I open the app and click somewhere else, that my window always stays on the top. You don't have to do this, but in my opinion, it's easier this way. Okay, for now we have everything made in QML. So the images, the text, everything is mocked from the QML side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all this data, put it on the C++ side and use it like that. What this allows us is to manipulate the data more efficiently. And more importantly, we can finally split up the data between our users. Because for now, if I click here, it shows us this text. But if I click here, it still shows us me, it still shows us the last messages from my side and not from my mom. So let's get started. Directly in our sources, I'm gonna add a class called Application Manager. The Application Manager will be responsible for keeping all our classes together and manipulating them. Since I include a queue object, this class needs to inherit queue object. We also have to include the queue object macro. And what it does, to say it in simple words, is telling Qt that this is a queue object. For a detailed explanation, I put the text at the bottom and you can pause the video. In the constructor of our application manager, I'm going to put a queue object as a parent. And on the CPP side, we have to use that parent. Qt has a nice mechanism of clearing memory. Basically what it does is if you define a parent, if the parent is getting destroyed, all its children will be destroyed automatically. In normal C++, that is being handled mostly in the destructors. What people would do is define a destructor and inside of it, delete all of its children or use smart pointers. In the future of our project, I'm going to use a lot of this parent-child system. Okay, now we have our application manager. We're going to create another class. And it's going to be called user. The user class is also going to inherit the queue object. And if you're asking yourselves why, that's because we're going to use queue properties. Queue properties allow us to expose the C++ variables on the QML side. But before I use our queue properties, I'm going to define our private variables. The main variable, of course, being the ID. As you can see, we need a name, we need a last name, the image URL, and we need to store the messages by user. So I'm going to define a queue list, and the queue list is going to be composed of the message classes, which we don't have right now. So I'm just going to define it and comment it out for now. The way that we can define queue properties is manually, of course, but Qt has also the ability to generate it, and I'm going to do that. So you go refactor, and generate queue property. One important thing here is to know if your properties are going to be mutable or not. In our case, name, last name are not going to be mutable. So I'm going to generate a constant queue property and it's missing members. Let me move this up. So what it did is define the name of the property. In our case, it's name. And this is basically the name that we're going to use on the QML side. You'll see that later. The read key should be connected with the getter of our name. In our case, it's also called name. But keep in mind, if this was called get name, this would not work because this is searching for specifically for name. We could either change this to get name or keep it as it was. I'm going to define the last name the same way. And just for example's sake, I'm going to make this image URL mutable. So we're going to generate its missing members without the constant. As you can see, it created the getter and the setter. And if we go to our header and I move this up, it also defined the right key and it connected it to the setter. As you can see, the name is also the same as our setter name. And one last thing is the notify key. The notify key is connected to the change signal that has also been generated. The change signal is basically telling QML that something on C++ has changed and that it should re-render its screen. So if you would create a setter and didn't use this, even if you changed this value, nothing would change on the QML side because the QML doesn't know that something changed. It would change if you would destroy the screen and reopen it again. So in short, the signal is telling the QML side that it should call the getter again and change the information that it displayed. And for the ID, I'm just going to generate a getter. And in our constructor, I'm just going to define all these values. And as you can see, I did what I also did in the application manager. 
and included the parent. Here we're going to assign all these values. And we need one more variable and that is show if the user is online or not. Okay, so now that we have our user, as you can see, if we open the user, we have some messages in it. So it would be good to implement this message class. I'm going to create another class that's going to be called message. And I'm actually going to create a new directory and I'm going to call it user. I'm going to assign this class to that directory. And also I'm going to take the user and move it there. So it's a little bit cleaner. It's going to register it as a file being removed. So we're going to close all. And here in user, I'm going to say add existing files. Okay, back to our message class. Message class is going to be very simple. It's also going to inherit from queue object because we need queue properties. And we're going to define a few variables. We need the contents of the message. So basically the text. We need the time of the message. It's going to be a string. And we need the sender of the message. That is going to be the user ID of the message. All of these values are going to be constants. So I'm just going to refactor everything to be a constant. And I just need to change the constructor. So the contents are going just to be contents, but the time is going to be a little bit more complicated. We're going to use Q time, of course included. We're going to take the current time, format that to a string, and give it the format of hours and minutes. And lastly, the user ID. And we're done with our message. Now let's go back to the user. Now we can uncomment this. We just need to include it and we have our messages, but also we need to expose that to the QML size. So I'm going to refactor it and this is going to be mutable. So I'm just going to generate it normally and move this up. So for now we have our user with all the values that he needs. But if we go back here, you notice that we grouped all of our users in our list. So what we need is a new class and we're going to call it user list. We're still using your object. And all this list is going to have is a private variable. It's going to be a queue list of our users. I need to include the user class and I need to expose this to QML. Now we have all our models in place, but in order to send messages, I need to include a controller also. So what I'm going to do is create another class and I'm going to call it chat. This will not follow exactly the classic model view controller pattern because for this example it would unnecessarily overcomplicate things. But if you're creating a bigger project, I highly recommend you use that pattern or maybe some other pattern. Our chat class is also going to inherit a queue object. And for its private variables, we're going to have our user list. Let me include it. I'm going to call it user list. For this user list, I'm not going to use queue properties just to show you another way of doing it. So we have our user list. And in the constructor here, since we're using a pointer, I need to allocate memory for it. So I'm going to create a new user list. And its parent is going to be this. This is where the parent-child mechanism kicks in. When this chat gets destroyed, the user list will get destroyed automatically also. So I don't have to worry about memory management at all. And in our user list, in the constructor, I'm going to define a few users. The way that we're doing that is using users. And then we're going to create a new user. For now, I'm just going to hard code the IDs and actually everything else. For the image URL, I'm not going to put anything, so we can cover that case also when the user doesn't have an image. And the parent is going to be this, with this meaning the user list. And I'm going to copy paste a few more users. Now, just to prove that the image URLs are not a hoax, I went inside of our stored images and I'm going to delete every user that we had. For now, we didn't expose anything. In order to do that, in our main.cpp, I'm going to include our application manager. It's also going to be a pointer and its parent is going to be the engine. So what's going to happen is when the engine gets destroyed, our application manager will get destroyed. And every child that set application manager as its parent is going to get destroyed also. So what I'm going to do now is expose our chat and expose our user list here. And we're going to do it the same way we exposed our QML engine. So we're going to use engine root context. I'm going to copy this. We're going to create our chat. It's going to be app. Now the problem is I didn't put anything in our application manager. All we have to do here is create a private variable that is going to be our chat. I need to include it. And here I'm going to define a getter. Since it's a pointer, I need to initialize it. 
and application manager will be its parent. Back to our main. Okay, the name is not app, it's app manager. We exposed our chat and now I also want to expose the user list the same way. So I'm going to copy paste this. I'm going to call it users. It's going to be chat. Okay, here I forgot the getter also. So we have our user list. So it's going to be chat user list. And now if I rerun our application, okay, we have some issues. Our old user before we moved it remained here. Now if I run our app, it's having some issues because we removed our old images and everything else is still in the QML side. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect everything. Let's go to our contacts view, contact list. And this list view is using the contacts as a model. So now we can delete this. And as a model, we can use users dot user list. If you remember, we define in the main our users and inside of it, Oh, actually we call it users also. So it's going to be called users.users. Yeah, I know a little bit strange. Now there are the users, but nothing is currently visible except our highlight, but it's good. Trust me. Now let's go inside of our contact delegate. Contact data is not going to be contacts, it's going to be contacts list view. We're accessing the model. The model is actually this. So it would be the same if we did this, but this is a little bit more optimized. And then we're accessing the index. This is now our user. If I save it now, we have our names. That's good. But we still have some issues because we define the names differently right now. First of all, I'm getting the issue TLS initialization failed. I made a video on how to fix this. So access the link on the top right. And I'm going to cut this part. Okay, I fixed the images, but still our default image is missing. The solution to this is right click our QRC file, add existing files. And we're going to take our avatar image. Now it's inside of our QRC. I'm going to copy the path and in our user.cpp, instead of image URL, I'm going to ask first if it's empty. If it is, then we're going to use our local path. And if it's not empty, then we're using the actual image URL. Now, if I rerun our app, we have the default images also. Now let's see what the next issue is. Last message. I'm not going to access the last message anymore. Now we're going to access the message list that we have defined. So it's going to be contact data messages. If the length is zero, then it's going to be an empty string messages. If it's not empty, I'm going to access the last message from the list. And that is an object. If you remember, I'm going to access the contents or the text of the message. Okay. So we made a mistake here. It's not message but messages. So I need to fix this. Sorry about that. Now it's not complaining anymore, but it's still empty. That's because our messages list is empty. We're going to fill that later. We're missing the last name. So here we're going to use contact data name plus white space, contact data, last name. Now, if you remember, good morning, John Doe, this is also a user. So we're going to create that user also. Back to our chat, I'm going to create a new object, it's going to be a user, main user. And while I'm at it, when we click on a new user, we should also store that user. So I'm going to create another object and I'm going to call it open chat user. So the main user is us and the open chat user is the person that we opened here. The open chat user is going to be mutable. So I'm going to generate it normally and here it's going to be a null pointer since at the beginning we didn't open anything. Let me move this up and the main user is going to be a constant since we cannot change ourselves. This is going to be a new user. It's going to be John, Doe, no image needed. And this is the parent. Our ID is going to be zero. I'm going to move this up. And in order to use this, I need to reload our app. Let me actually change this to Sam Samson, just so you see the difference. In our header, we're not going to use John Doe anymore. We're going to use chat main user name plus main user last name. The last thing is using C++ data on the messages. So we're going to go to our open chat, chat thread. We're going to delete this list model. And here for the model, we're going to use the current open user. So open chat user, it's going to be chat, open chat user dot messages. So it's complaining about the alias that we defined, but we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to delete it. Inside of our chat bubble, we need to make a few changes. I need to define a few more properties and they're all going to be read only. First one is our message object, open chat list, model, index. And we need to know if we're the sender or not. 
We're checking that by accessing the message, the user ID. We're checking if that's the same ID as the main user's ID. Our current variable should show time also needs some changes. It's going to be pretty similar to this, but instead of chat history count, we're going to use open chat list count. And here we're going to check if the last message is from the same person that the previous message was or not. I'm going to use open chat list model again. I'm accessing the next message from this message. I'm going to access the user ID and I'm checking if it's different from the main user ID. Next here, it's not going to be message, but message contents. Here we're going to use message time. Now still we don't see anything because we don't have any messages. First of all, let's fix the header. In order to access the name of the current user, I'm going to define a property that's going to keep track of our current user. In our open chat view, I'm going to define an ID. And inside of it, I'm going to create a property. It's going to be chat and our open chat user. Now that we have our open chat user, we can use it in the header. But there's going to be situations maybe where the current chat user is going to be null. So I'm going to cover that edge case. Chat view root. The open chat user is null. Then we're going to show an empty string. If it's not null, then we're going to use the name and the last name. As you can see, we don't see anything because we're still not selecting the current user. So let's finish this first. We're going to do the same principle here for the online, except this is going to be false. And this is going to be is online since our user has is online property. Now let's go back to our context list. So what we want is when we click this, we want to set the current open chat user to this object. So here on click the sides of pushing it, we're going to access the chat, open that user, and we're going to say it's the contact data. Now, if I click on Marco, it's showing us our name. Let's go back to the header. Actually, instead of false, this should say offline. And here, based on the Boolean, we need to say if it's online or offline. Okay, that's better. And here, we're not going to use the hard-coded image. We're going to check if it's null. If it's null, then it's going to be an empty string. And if it's not null, we're going to access our current open user. And we're going to take the image URL. Now we have the image. And lastly, in our chat input, when we send the message, we're not going to use this JavaScript mess here. I'm going to delete everything here. We're going to access the chat and we're going to call a signal that's called send message. And we're just going to send the text of the message field. Now, if you remember, we didn't define a send message signal. So we're going to go back to our chat. We're going to define a signal called send message. And we're going to define a slot that's going to be connected to the signal on send message. I need to define this. In the constructor, we need to connect the signal to the slot. I'm going to do a tutorial on the signal slot mechanism, but for now, you can just copy paste this. Now, in our on send message slot, we need to cover an edge case first. So if no open chat user exists, we are exiting the function. And in the normal case, we're just going to append the message to our user. I'm going to call a function called add message. Now, even though it doesn't exist yet, I'm going to put the arguments and then we're going to create the function. I'm going to create a new object. It's going to be a message. For that, I need to include message. The contents is going to be a message. That is the string that's being sent. And we need to add an ID. In this case, since we are always sending the message, it's always going to be the main user ID. And we need to set the parent, and it's going to be the open chat user. So when the open chat user is destroyed, this message is also going to be destroyed. So let's create the add message function. So it's taking a message pointer. And in the definition, it's just going to take the messages. It's going to append the message. And in order to refresh the screen on the QML side, we need to emit the signal. Messages change. Okay, let me rerun the app. Now, if I send a message to Novak Djokovic, let's see this issue. Contact data is not defined. Okay, I made a typo here. So it's contact data. As you can see, the message still stayed, even though we refreshed our screen. So now if I send another message, actually I realize we need to expose the ID. So now if I open Marco and send him a message, send him another message. And when I open Novak and say Novak, it actually keeps the messages. It will differentiate between me when I send messages to me, or send messages to Novak, or send messages to Elon. And that will be it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.